Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another edition of Headbangers Closet. It's your buddy Brett. Uh, appreciate you joining in. Appreciate all the positive comments and feedback and the likes and subscribes. Appreciate all that, even the negative comments. Um, I'm cool with it. Um, at least you're watching. Uh, so, hadn't done a video in a while for you guys, and I apologize for that. It's kind of had some life stuff get in the way. Um, you know how it is. Things get in the way. You know, your weekend just basically just disappears. And I uh, didn't have time to do a video. Didn't want to do some stupid quick one for you guys. Want to do something legit. Um, really want to do something to kind of commemorate Eddie Van Halen. Kind of interesting. I did my 1984 record. And a lot of, a lot of you guys like that one. Uh, the video on that one. And then Eddie passed. And uh, you know, it sucks. I've been jamming out to Van Halen ever since. Um, but got a Metallica release for you guys I want to talk about. I'm um, going to show you my whole collection for this particular release. So I uh, got my internet beer, and let's get into it. Oh yeah, and I got a story about this one for you guys too. So sit back and relax, because it's story time. So anyway, Garage Days revisited. August 21st, 1987, a day after my 12th birthday. That's when this bad boy came out. This is a US pressing original on Electra Records. Picked this up at a record store in downtown Marion, Georgia. If I recall correctly, the guy that oh, let me get my beer out of the way. The guy that sold this to me was kind of a dick. He had he was selling for way more than it was you know worth. So I offered him a deal, and golly, I mean, I offered him like, hey, man, you take this for it. And the guy was a complete asshole. It sucks though because they have a, he has, I don't know I don't know how, but the dude's got a huge Metallica selection. Tons and tons of bootlegs. So like, I go back there like, you know, every couple of months. But I really don't like giving the guy my business, to be honest with you. So anyway, there we go. U.S. original pressing on Electra Records. So I like to get a couple, you know, I always like to get the original if, if I can. That one's actually in great condition. There's not a lot of wear and tear to it. This next one, though, I love. So I don't know if it's an official release or not. This is 1987 European import right there. Um, but check out the condition. You can see the, the record ring and the inside ring. Hell, I'm never going to play this. I just dig it. I think to me that looks badass. So this is on Creeping Death Music and Phonogram Records. And then here it says right here, Mercury. Uh... I'll have to do the research. I don't know if whether or not this is actually a legit release. Um, I kind of assume it is, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. So I don't know. Like I said, I didn't have to have it until I saw the condition it was in, and then I was like, oh yeah, that's got to go to the collection. And that'll just probably be sitting on display somewhere. So those are the originals that I've got. Um, I'll tell you a little story. Um, so I had heard of Metallica before. I've heard I heard the song Master of Puppets. I heard you know song Creeping Death, and this is back like in the eighty six, uh, eighty early eighty seven um, time frame. And I was just a kid, um, so I think I was in maybe like middle school in like sixth seventh grade. Hell, I don't even remember. Uh, prob probably fifth or sixth grade at the time. Anyway, so the kid. I grew up hanging out with a big metal fan named uh, Rob Perry. I was like, oh, you gotta listen to Metallica. And, you know, you put on, you know, brought Ride the Lightning over. We'd be playing like Nintendo and shit. Brought Ride the Lightning over. And I was like, ah, it's cool. It kind of sounds all the same. You know, Master puts on Master Puppets. I'm like, oh, it's heavy. It's, you know, really cool, but kind of sounds all the same. And at the time, I was still listening to bands like Motley Crue and Dawkin and, you know, hair bands, you know, ACDC, stuff like that. You know, a little, little bit of Iron Maiden. Um, and I just wasn't really feeling the whole Metallica thing. But I thought they were cool. I thought they were talented. I just wasn't, like, you know, super into them. Um, but, you know, fate in the universe wanted me to be a Metallica fan. So this album would come out, and he brought over the cassette tape, and he popped it in, and the first song that played was Crash Course in Brain Surgery. For some reason, I thought it sounded awesome. It sounded like it was dudes playing in their garage like they were just this new band that hadn't got signed yet hence you know the garage days name and i kind of put two and two together and figured it out um you know with the play on words there with the garage days and i thought that was super cool 
I was like, oh, these dudes are so cool. They don't need, like, fancy studios. They just go in their mom's garage and record the album. I thought they lived at home with their moms. I don't know. I was just a kid. They, like I said, came out the day after my 12th birthday. You know, I was just a kid. So I thought they still lived at home with their parents. And they were like, hey, we're in a band that made three freaking awesome albums. But let's go to mom and dad's garage and record this, like, EP, you know. But anyway, I thought it was cool. Um, I really liked it. He let me borrow the tape, and I just wore it out for about a month until I finally was able to go to a place called Ann and Hope. I think I've talked about that, that store in another episode. And pick up my own cassette tape. Uh, I never bought records back then. Didn't have a record player. I had a cassette boom box in my bedroom when I was a little grown up. So I got the cassette tape. Uh, so that's my story. It was kind of the fate aligned for me to be a Metallica fan. And as a little kid, as you maybe can recall, between this album, this EP, and then Justice for All, you know, other bands released albums that I was into. And I kind of didn't forget about them, but they weren't really on the forefront of my memory until Justice for All. And that was like a whole... The, the, the worm had definitely turned for me, man, as Sergeant Elias and Platoon said. When Justice for All came out and I first heard the first few songs off that record, holy shit. Everything in my entire life changed. But that's another story from the video. So let's keep keep rocking and rolling. So Metallica set out when they did Black and Recordings. They re-released the albums and uh, they re-released Garage Age Re-Revisited. And they put up many versions of it. Actually, three. So they put out a black version, a uh, picture disc, and orange. So this is my sealed copy of the black version. And I'm going to open it because... You can kind of get this like pretty much anywhere. Pretty cheap still. Uh, I think you can actually get it for like 12 bucks or something on Metallica's website. So if I need to buy another sealed one, I can. So don't freak the fuck out that I'm opening this thing. So all the, the versions have basically the same photos in the studio of them recording it. And then this picture from the, a bathroom, I believe Ra Ross Halfin took these. Fun fact, uh, these are my, some of my favorite all-time Metallica photo shoot. The pictures of James and Kirk, where Kirk's uh, got that black and white Fender Stratocaster, and James has the white Explorer. Love it. Love those photos. And they're dressed in all long sleeve, and long, you know, long sleeve shirt and long pants, black. So this is it right here. Black vinyl. There we go. No... Glare. Bam. Pretty cool. I really dig the logo. I really dig the orange print with the black. Uh, it was really cool. So. So that's the black version that they released. Black vinyl. So next, we've got another one. This is open. I don't really know which one this is yet. So let's pop it out. Ah, the picture disc. Basically, same as the record. Really cool. I really love the logo uh, with a that Metallica's like written, you know, in blue pen, obviously by James, and then five, the 590, 598 EP, Garage Days Re Revisited. Um, would love to have that sealed copy with the stickers that says, Do Not Pay More. Uh, but, you know, that's hard to find. So, this is the picture disc. Pretty cool. So here's the orange copy. I got a sealed, sealed copy of the orange vinyl. I'm gonna keep this one sealed. But I've got an open one, so I can show you the orange. And as you guys know, I love my colored vinyl. So this is pretty cool, again, with the orange and black writing. Pretty cool orange, pretty cool orange vinyl, I dig it. So I'll have this one for display, and then I'll keep the sealed one, keep it put up. So pretty soon when the closet's finished, I'll have every major Metallica release framed on the wall along with posters. I just got just got in actually a really cool Megadeth poster. The if you've been paying attention to this channel, the uh, No More Mr. Nice Guy. Um, album cover, which, I, like I said in a previous video, is my all-time favorite Eddie 
um, cover. I got a really cool 16 by 16 poster of that in the mail the other day, so I'm going to frame that, put it up. So hopefully things will be, you know, next like month or two ready to go for the closet. We'll be shooting my videos from somewhere else. So, but anyway, hope you dug that one. Uh, that was my collection of Metallica's Garage Days Re Revisited, original releases and reissues. So hopefully you dig it. And uh, put the comments, let me know which ones you guys have. Do you have them all? Um, is there a certain one you're looking for that you haven't found yet? Is there only just a couple you want to collect? Just let me know what you think about that record and the releases. And uh, I'll always reply back when I get a chance. And again, hit the like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate all the support from everybody, all the positive feedback. So thank you very much. See you next time. Peace.